Well, good morning. It's great to see so many of you are here. Thanks for coming. I know some of you have traveled quite some way to be with us today, so thank you for um, taking the effort to come here. I think you'll find today very, very rewarding. I'm sorry I don't speak Korean, so unfortunately I'm going to have to talk in English, so apologies for that, but many of the sessions today will be in Korean. So my name's James Sanders. I'm the director of Google Play here in Asia Pacific. And I wanted to take some time to talk to you about what's new with Google Play. But before we get into that, I thought it would be helpful to talk, or talk about the scale of Android and the scale of Google Play so you can see how far uh, the platform you're building on has come in the last year. So let's start with Android. Every day, 1.5 million new Android devices are activated around the world. That's an incredible rate of device activation. And what that means is the total number of Android devices is growing very, very quickly. And we were delighted to announce a couple of months ago that we had just passed the 2 billion active Android device mark. So that's nearly one third of the world's population now has an Android device. Now, as the number of Android devices are growing, the number of app installs are growing with it. And in the last year, 82 billion apps have been downloaded onto users' devices from Play. Now, this momentum is translating into a lot of success for many developers. Now, Google is a very data-driven company, and we track a lot of metrics. One of the metrics we track is the number of developers that are achieving um, 1 million monthly installs. And we are delighted that in the last year, the number of developers achieving a million monthly installs has increased 35%. Now, what this means is that more and more businesses are able to achieve um, really great success and get to absolutely huge scale on the back of Android and Play. And it's great to see so many developers building such successful businesses. But the number of installs is only the first step. What makes your businesses successful, what makes you money, is the ability of users to pay, whether it's for a, um, to pay to purchase an app or to pay in-app for um, an item or a subscription. And Play is investing very, very heavily in building out a world-class commerce platform um, in, in every market we serve. And through continued effort by business development and engineering teams, we are accepting more and more forms of payments around the world. We now accept credit card in 135 countries. We have direct carrier billing relationships with 140 mobile carriers in 55 countries. We sell gift cards in 700,000 retail locations in 30 countries, and we accept PayPal in 20 countries. The sheer scale of our payments platform is amazing, but we're continuing to invest, and you can expect to see next year these numbers will all have increased, and there will be many more forms of payments that we accept. In addition to making payments available, we work very closely with retailers and with mobile carriers to promote awareness and usage um, of, of Google Play payments. The Play gift card is now available in 45,000 retail locations in Korea. And two months ago, we enabled buying gift cards using culture vouchers. The implementation of culture vouchers uh, directly um, integrated into our payments platform is an indicator of our willingness to work with um, local businesses around the world that can help us reach more and more users, so extend the reach of our payments platform. Now, as a result of these efforts, more and more users are buying your apps and um, paying for your games. And in the last year, the number of new buyers on Play grew 30%. In particular, we're seeing very, very strong growth in subscriptions, um, whether that's subscriptions for video on demand or for dating or for gaming. The number of subscriptions on Play doubled in the last year, 
and 62% of subscribers tell us that they open their subscription app at least once per day. Now, let me elaborate a little bit more on subscriptions. Our mission at Play is to turn your amazing products into profitable businesses. And we see subscriptions as another opportunity for you to make more money more regularly and more reliably. Consumer um, spend on subscriptions has grown 10x in the last three years. And to support all of you to capture this momentum, we're investing in a range of new functions from our subscription API to um, analytics for subscriptions on Play Console. And we have a session later today to give you tips, so stay tuned for that. Now at Play, we're continually investing in helping all of you, all our developer community, reach more users. And over the last year, we've been very, very pleased to launch the Play Store on both the Daydream VR and on Chromebooks. Now, Daydream VR is an um, incredibly affordable mass market um, virtual reality experience. So if any of you haven't used it, I'd encourage you to give it a try. Um, there's an opportunity to try it just outside this room. We've got a demo set up. Um, anyone buying Daydream VR now has access to the Play Store and a range of apps and games in there that are designed for a virtual reality experience. And then on Chromebooks, Chromebooks, many of you will know, are uh, in some categories now the most popular laptop in the world. And slowly we're rolling out the Play Store on more and more Chromebooks, um, which enables you to reach new users in a whole new set of contexts on a new type of device. In addition to this, we're also investing very heavily in Android multi-screen devices, such as Android Wear and Android TV. In Android Wear 2.0 that was launched earlier this year, we have more informative watch faces and new ways to build apps. And on Android TV, we're investing in a content-centric home screen experience, and we're bringing the Google Assistant to the platform shortly. Android Instant Apps are an opportunity for all of you to reach users in um, a new way that is much um, easier for a user to trial your app. For those of you that are not familiar with Android Instant Apps, it's a technology that allows you to build modularized apps where a user can interact with your app by just downloading onto their device a single module. Now, the purpose of Instant Apps is to close the gap between the web experience and the app experience. So um, websites do not have the functionality of apps, but are much easier for a user to interact with because they don't involve going to a store and downloading an app and installing an app. On the other hand, apps are much more functional, but there is a hurdle for users installing them. With instant apps, a user is able to trial your full app experience without going through the process of downloading and installing the full app. If they like the app and they want to use it again, they can then install it. And if, if they don't, that's fine as well. So it should be an experience that enables you to get more users trialing your apps and hopefully get those users converting to installing your apps and continuing to reuse them. So if you've not looked at instant apps, I would encourage all of you to um, check out the details online. Um, and play around with the technology and hopefully um, try an instant app, instant app version of your app. Now, early this year at I.O., we previewed Android Go, which is an optimized version of Android for affordable entry-level devices. We see affordable um, entry-level devices as the way to bring the next billion or so users onto the internet. So we see this as a hugely important um, group of users. And with Android Go, low-end, low-spec devices should be able to run the full Android experience. But using Android Go, it's um, optimized for those sorts of devices, which really is going to, over time, um, hugely increase the target audience for your apps and your games. And then finally, the Play Store continues to evolve. Our engineers are tuning up our AI engine to give you better and more personalized recommendations to users who are looking for apps. And we recently introduced our new editorial pages. Now, our new editorial format that you can see on the screen 
Our professional writers give users more context on what's great about a particular app or a particular game to enable users to make more informed choices. Users can explore different game genres and app categories with editorial reviews on themes such as fitness, buying and selling goods, epic RPG, car racing games, and so on. And all of these are in the revamped edit choice section. Now, so far, we've launched editorial in six countries, including Korea and Japan. And we're going to be expanding to more countries by the end of this year. All right, so now you understand the opportunity. You understand there are going to be a lot more users. You can understand you can reach users on new devices and in new ways. But I want to cover off one of the most important questions we always get from developers, which is how can I get my app exposed even more on play? So let me give you some optimization tips. And to do this, I'm going to use an analogy, um, which is that the Play Store is a little bit like picking a baseball player in the baseball draft. So for both the baseball draft and for Play Store featuring, you'd look at a range of factors such as size, stats, power, speed, stability, popularity. In the case of a baseball player to measure these factors, We'd look at hits and hitting average, height and weight ratio, slugging percentage, base running lap, batting form, injury history, um, and popularity amongst fans. In the case of an app, we look for similar types of measurements. We look at downloads and retention rates, APK size, graphic rendering power, responsiveness, UI design and navigation, um, Clash and ANR reports, and user reviews and scores. In Google, Play, in Google Play, and in many cases machines, and in some cases humans, look at these factors to make merchandising and featuring decisions. So as a developer, if you want your app to be exposed to more users on Play, you need to work hard to improve each of these factors. And today, we've prepared a number of sessions to help you learn how to do that. So later today, Adam is going to present on how to slim down your app size. Liam and Yasmin will be talking about successful navigation. The AdWords team will be here to talk about tips to improve downloads and improve retention. And Play Console, Android Studio, and Firebase sessions will tell you important tips on how to improve app quality so that your app crashes less. All right. Hopefully, you'll all learn something from these sessions and have something to take back to the office at the end of the day to improve your apps and to improve your businesses. So thank you for your time. I'd now like to introduce Soon Son, who's going to um, cover a recap of what we discussed at I.O. earlier this year. Thank you very much.